Hello, my name's Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the second in a series of IoT Security Raspberry Pi Emulation Lab Videos. This lab video is Lab 4.2.2.5 Port Scanning an IoT Device. We'll be making use of our now familiar lab topology with our Kali Linux Virtual Machine uh, going through the VirtualBox host only adapter into the Windows Bridge. The Windows Bridge consisting of the VirtualBox host only adapter, VME1, VME2, VME3, uh, air Windows Tap adapters which allow air emulated Raspberry Pis to connect into the Windows Bridge. I'm only going to use Node 3 for this particular lab. I've already started up Kali Linux. I have an IP address of 203.0.113.1, the standard static IP address on the Kali Linux VM. I've also switched on the ISC DHCP server. I can tell that it's switched on if I run the command server ISC DHCP server status. And you can see that uh, also there has been a Dora request, discover, offer, request, acknowledge, for an IP address uh, from uh, the DHCP server, in fact for two IP addresses, dot .25 has been given to the Windows Bridge and dot .28 has been given to the Kumu Raspberry Pi, Kumu RPI3. Talking of Kumu RPI3, I've also started that uh, Raspberry Pi instance and we can see on here that we do indeed have an IP address of 203.0.113.28 Now this is a nice straightforward lab. You shouldn't find any problems with this particular lab. Um, let's just give you a, uh, a little for instance of how this lab will actually work. And what I'm going to do, just to make life just that little bit more interesting, I'm going to actually start up a few services. Um, so I'm going to type history, just to see what is in my history file. And then I'm going to use shift and the page up key to go up the history file. And you can see that in a previous lab, I've actually started OpenBSD inet.d service, which gives me the telnet service. And that runs with no configuration changes required. Um, I've also started um, previously the VSFTPD daemon, which is a very secure file transfer protocol daemon to give me FTP. And uh, that does require a slight change to the um, configuration file for VSFTPD, uh, which is outlined in the foundation video for services. Now if I wish to repeat those commands, these are commands 219 and 220 in my history list, it's very straightforward to do that. I can just put exclamation mark 219 and that will repeat command 219 and exclamation mark 220 which will repeat command 220 okay now when I run the command SS minus TL show sockets TCP listening uh, you can see I've got some more interesting sockets open now not just HTTP I've also got FTP now SSH and Telnet so that gives the Nmap program, Airport Scanner, something interesting to have a little look at. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go into the Kali Linux machine. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick man page. So man of Nmap. And we can see that we actually have the full man page here for Nmap, the network exploration tool and security port scanner. I can go down a line at a time with the enter key you can see some examples popping up on the screen there. Um, I can go down a page at a time with the space bar, or you can just use the up and down, page up, page down keys. Okay, to come out of the manual, you can hit Q. I'll hit Control L to clear the screen. And then what we'll do is we'll have a little look at doing an Nmap scan. We'll just see if we can find the Raspberry Pi from this Kali Linux machine. Uh, so Nmap, we'll just do a nice straightforward scan to start off with, uh, specifying simply our network address. So 
that will be 203.0.113.0 on a slash 24 subnet mask. Okay, I paused the recording there for about uh, 60 or 70 seconds and now the Nmap scan has completed and we can see it's picked up two IP addresses. Uh, this IP address here, 203.0.113.25 is the Windows Network Bridge and the IP address here, 203 0 .0 is an emulated Raspberry Pi. Um, you can even see the IP address, uh, sorry, the MAC address that I created in the batch file for the tap adapter for this emulated Raspberry Pi. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, have a little look at the foundational videos. Uh, we can see the services that are running on this Raspberry Pi, port 21, TCP, FTP, 22, TCP, SSH, 23 TCP Telnet and finally 80 TCP Hypertext Transfer Protocol. In other words, we have a web server running. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll just open up another terminal window. I can hit Control Shift T uh, to open a new tab. And in that new tab, I'm going to type Wireshark and I'm actually going to put the ampersand on the end. So space ampersand in order to run it in the background. This will detach it from the terminal session, the actual cell session, and will allow me to basically use the cell session, even though Wireshark is now running. Okay, you don't need to worry about this error related to LUA. Uh, that doesn't actually mean anything, right? Well, anything important anyway. Okay, so we now have NMA, uh, Wireshark up and running, and we can see on Ethernet zero uh, already, uh, we can detect that there is some activity from the trace. Okay, and we can see various things bouncing around on the screen here. We can see some spanning tree protocol, uh, almost certainly coming off of the uh, Windows Network bridge, because uh, the bridge will be using spanning tree protocol because it's a bridge. And bridges and switches make use of spanning tree protocol in order to block layer two loops. Oh, we've got address resolution protocol. We've got some DNS rattling around in here. Um, numerous things going on, a little bit of TCP information, SYN packet being sent. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll leave that running and then what we'll do is we'll do an Nmap scan. Now before we do actually run that Nmap scan uh, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a filter. Uh, these display filters are absolutely superb so that will filter out a lot of the traffic that's zooming up the screen at the moment. So we're doing an IP source, which is the IP address of a Kali Linux VM, 203.0.113.1, and an IP destination, which is the IP address of our emulated Raspberry Pi, node number three. I'll just click the little blue background arrow, and now we can see not a lot happening now. I'm um, Just to prove that that is actually coming from the correct machine, I'll just bring up the Kumu window and we'll ping the Kali Linux machine. Too many ones in there. That's it. And in the background you can actually see the ICMP echo replies and they will only be replies coming back because the requests will be going in the wrong direction for that particular display filter. Okay, so you'll actually see that there are only the replies that are showing coming back. I hit Control C to stop that and clear the screen. Excellent. Now, our next job will be to go into the terminal window on the Kali Linux machine and run a Nmap scan again and see what happens. So let's just bring up the Kali Linux machine and repeat that Nmap scan. Okay, the Nmap, Nmap scan is now completed. We'll have a little look at uh, the output of Wireshark. 
and wow look at this all these SYN packets TCP SYN packets a lot of useful information up there different ports being scanned Now you can see why a standard scan like this might trigger something such as an intrusion detection system or an intrusion prevention system because that has generated quite a lot of traffic doing that scan. So this is active scanning of course. Okay, um, so you can see uh, this, this, this lab just simply works. Um, there's no real gotcha moments or aha moments on this one uh, provided you followed through the foundational labs and you just take some care um, with the instructions that you type in you shouldn't actually have any problems with this lab okay let's try one more thing before we sign off what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy that filter because that's just a rather nice useful filter okay and uh, then what we can do is we can probably put that filter into uh, some I think it's something along the lines of a text editor. Uh, I'll tell you what we could do actually, uh, just for ease. Um, let's just bring up the terminal window. That might be the easiest way. So uh, let's have a little look. I'll bring up that empty terminal window there, and what I'll do is I'll just uh, use my middle mouse button, uh, which will paste it into the terminal window. Okay, so we've now got that for prosper prosperity. Okay, I'll hit Control C, so as I've still got the terminal window. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll get ready to start that capture again. So we'll stop the capture by pressing the big square red button. And then we'll start the capture again. I'll continue without saving. Okay, ah, good. It did actually remember the capture filter, so I didn't even need to save it but it's a useful sort of backup I guess you could say. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do an operating system fingerprint. So how do we do the operating system fingerprint? Quite straightforward. All we need to do is put hyphen O after nmap. That's a capital O. And what this will do is this will actually try to guess the operating system running on the emulated Raspberry Pi. Ah, superb. Okay, so uh, the operating system fingerprint scan has just finished now. We can see the services that are open and listening. A MAC address type of device. It identifies as a general purpose device running Linux, uh, some three or four uh, kernel version um, operating system details so okay not super specific there but it says it is a version of Linux running either sort of 3.2 up to a 4.8 kernel so if we actually have a quick look at our Raspberry Pi and we do a uname minus R we see that the kernel is in fact 4.434 plus so that's pretty good. That's that's pretty much bang on. Okay, um, and if we have a little look at the Wireshark capture, uh, we can see that there is uh, a lot of SYN packets, but we can also see that there's various other things going on there as well. There's uh, some reset packets going on in there, and numerous other things too. Okay. So as I said, this lab, this lab's a pretty, pretty neat little lab. Uh, we've got some fin, push, erg packets. So finish, push, urgent. Uh, it's uh, all kinds of things going on there. Even some ICMP is being sent. Well, hey, look at that, because you can tell a lot from ICMP, as it says in the lab. Uh, it does actually mention that the TTL uh, for pings from Linux is normally set to 64. Uh, so again, we could always give that a try. Um, so we've gone to our Kali Linux machine and from a terminal window 
we'll fire a quick ping across and we can just use a uh, minus C4 uh, just to fire four pings across to 203.0.113.28 and there we go there's a TTL set to 64 which would also agree that we are actually pinging a Linux system so yeah this this lab this is a nice straightforward lab you shouldn't really have any major problems with this lab so I hope you found that useful and please join me again for a next IOT security Raspberry Pi emulation lab video